welcome to this lecture. Uh, in the last lecture, we had uh, started to discuss about requirements analysis and specification. Requirements analysis and specification is one of the most important phases in the life cycle of a software development work. It has many skills to learn. This lecture will focus at how to go about carrying out the requirements analysis and specification. There are two aspects here, one is understanding the requirements and the second is about specifying the requirements. If we are developing a very small toy problem, then requirement specification is extremely easy because the issues are rather clear and we can specify those. But then for a industry standard problem, the requirement specification is typically the hardest of all the phases done by an experienced uh, person. It is the most problematic and error prone among the development tasks and it is important to note that any requirements error has a huge cost overhead. Unlike a coding error or something which can be quickly corrected, a requirements error costs maximum. To understand what exactly is uh, done during requirement specification, during this work the input is the user needs, hopefully the users understand what are the, they need, we need to gather, analyze, remove problems from that and then document that and at the end of the requirements analysis and specification we will have a precise statement of what the software will do and this is a, in the form of a SRS document, software requirement specification document. So far we have been saying that requirements are there in the client's mind and we need to gather it and document it. But what about the case where a company wants to develop a generic product? that is some product which may be useful to people. There is no specific client here, the company wants to develop something hoping that there will be many buyers for it. For example, a company might like to develop a uh, health embedded product which will monitor various health parameters and give feedback to people let us say it undertakes to develop such a product. Here the customers are not well known, they are not known at all actually. It can be purchased by anybody who likes it later, but then for development purpose who will the customer, who will give the requirements. Typically it is the sales personnel who understand that what will sell well, what features are required typically would be demanded by the customers and they will be the clients, they will act as the clients for the software and they will actually give the requirements. Now let us try to understand in more detail the activities carried out during requirements analysis and specification. As we are saying the first is requirements gathering because the requirements are there in the minds of the users, we need to gather it, we look at some techniques how to go about doing it and once the requirements is gathered, start doing the requirements analysis, but during requirement analysis we might find that uh, there are some requirements which are missing 
which are not clear and so on, we need to again meet the client and do more requirement gathering. And once the requirements analysis task is complete, we go about specification. Document the requirements and then the final outcome is the SRS document. So, there are three main activities here requirements gathering, requirements analysis, and requirement specification, and these are iteratively carried out because even though one is complete, we need to revisit it if required during the analysis and specification. We can also represent it in a more elaborate way in this form. After the feasibility study, the project has been found feasible, the requirements gathering started and then this is iterative work because once we do the requirements gathering, we start requirements analysis, but then we might find that uh, need to do more gathering, we need to resolve issues and do requirement specification, but then during requirement specification, we find that there are still requirements problem, we might do requirement analysis and again do requirement gathering. So, this is the iterative set of activities and at the end of the requirement specification, we have the SRS document produced. Now, let us look at these three activities in more detail, requirements gathering, here the requirements are there in the minds of the clients, we need to understand the requirements and then we need to remove problems here in the requirement. For example, are there any inconsistencies, anomalies and so on and then we do the requirement specification, where we document the requirements that we have gathered and analyzed. Let us see why SRS document is an important document. A good SRS document actually reduces development cost, because if we do not have proper requirements gathering and development starts, there will be many missing requirements, incorrectly understood requirements and so on and this will be expensive to fix later. Even if the requirements are done well, typically there is a 40 percent requirement change later, but if the requirements are not done well, these are not gathered documented well, then there will be much more changes and the development will become very expensive. Good SRS can minimize change the errors and as we are mentioning, if a error is found during the requirement specification, it leads to substantial saving, because otherwise with a wrong requirement, we might go on doing the other life cycle activities and then finally, come back and correct the requirements and that will cost multiple times the effort that we would put in the requirements phase to come up with a good requirement. we rather spend time in the requirements phase, try to make it as complete and as truly reflective of the customer requirements as possible, because any problems in the requirement has huge cost impl implication, because the cost of fixing requirements error during the design, coding and acceptance testing increases exponentially. If during the requirements we fix the bug or the error, then it costs very minimal. But as uh, the development proceeds, 
the design coding testing the cost increases substantially and the main reason is that if we find a problem uh, let us say a requirements is wrong we uh, realize during testing then we not only need to correct the requirements here review it change the design document review it and then again change the coding and again carry out the testing. So, the cost implications of errors is uh, huge, it increases exponentially. The more delay we have in identifying any error, the cost implications is huge. So, it is uh, really cost effective if we spend some time during the requirement gathering analysis and specification and we produce a good SRS document. Now, let us see if we produce a SRS document in what ways it will be used. One is that it is an agreement between the customer and the developer. As long as the customer agrees to the requirements, those uh, reflect the requirements of the customer and the developer agrees to develop those and then the developers take up the SRS document, understand it and start their design and development based on that. The project manager takes the SRS document and estimates the cost and schedule stops based on the number of features that are mentioned in the requirements and so on. The test team uses the SRS document, they take up the SRS document and based on that they design the test cases for the system testing. The SRS document is used for the user manual preparation because the SRS document contains all the functionalities to be provided by the software to the user. The user manual is typically based on the SRS document and also later when maintenance work start enhancements. porting etcetera. Again the requirements document is taken up, the specific features to be enhanced and so on they are identified and then the work starts from there. So, the SRS document is a very important document, it serves for multiple purposes including the basis for writing the user manual. In the user manual, in the document we describe the way the users can understand what are the functionalities that are provided by the software. The user manual is an important document of the user, here not only that we write in the user understandable form the various functionalities and uh, typically we also illustrate the functionalities with examples. The SRS document as we had seen has various uses and therefore, there are many users of the SRS document. The customers use it for uh, checking whether the developed software is as per their requirement. The requirement analysts, they develop the requirement, they write the SRS document. The developers, programmers etcetera often refer to the SRS document to carry out their work. The testers use the SRS document to design test cases and to ensure that the developed software 
meets the requirements. The project's managers estimate that is measure the work that is required and then for controlling the project. So, there are many stakeholders, the SRS document should be readable and understandable to the customers, the developers, the testers, the project managers and of course, the requirement analysts, they write the document. Each uh, stakeholder needs different types of information from the SRS document and in a way <coughs> that uh, they can appreciate. Since it is a very important document, there are standards here and one of the well accepted standard is the IEEE 830 standard. We will look at the IEEE 830 standard and typically the standard that is used in the industry are small variations of the IEEE 830 standard. If we understand IEEE 830 standard, how to document it, we should not only be able to read through the requirements developed by others, but also we should be able to write requirements that are accepted by others. Before that, let us try to understand the requirements process, that is what are the activities that are undertaken and how these are accomplished, we had some discussion on that, but let us look at more elaborately. Here the requirements gathering starting with the user needs, we gather the requirements and then analyze, but then we might have to go back to gathering and then once the, this is done satisfactorily, the gathering is complete and the analysis is satisfactorily complete, then we proceed to specification, but during specification also we might to have do some analysis and gathering, if we notice problems during writing down the or documenting the requirements. And once the SRS document is, the draft is uh, produced, it is reviewed by the customer to check whether all requirements have been captured by the development team members, whether these have been written in sufficient detail and so on. The testers, whether the testing or the test cases can be satisfactorily designed based on the requirements that have been uh, written down in the document. And once the re review is done, the SRS document is produced. It is important to understand here that uh, this is not a series of stages, lot of iterations goes on here, because during analysis we might realize that some problems need clarification from the customer, we need to do gathering or some requirements are missing and during specification also we might need to do some analysis and gathering. Now, let us try to see how to do the gathering, that is the first task in the requirements process here. There are many techniques that are typically deployed, we need to use multiple techniques for gathering requirements, we will take up a case study, simple case study to see how it can be done. The first is that if there is a existing manual system or there is a existing software which is something similar to the one that we are developing, we need to study that. Let us say an office work needs to be automated, we need to first observe that what work is exactly done in the office. If a software exists which is similar, we need to use it and check what all facilities it provides and where all we want changes. And once we observe the work, 
we need to study the procedures how this work are carried out. For this we need to discuss with the customer and end users. Also need to do input and output analysis that is if there is any forms that are input that uh, let us say take up a take the example of a office if the students and the faculty need to fill some forms and submit in the office those are the input we need to study what are the types of forms that are being used for input and output if the office produces some output then what are the forms they use to producing the output what are exactly the data that is input the data that is output by the office and based on this gathered requirement need to check what exactly is to be done we will look at in some more detail the gathering work the gathering activity typically we can say that there are five activities one is study existing documentation if there are documentation about uh, the system to be developed we need to study that carefully the second is interview we need to interview the end users and also the customer who is trying to have the software developed the third is called as task analysis that is based on the interview we identify that they use it for certain tasks they plan to use it for performing certain tasks and then we need to do the task analysis to find out what are the exact procedures based on which the task is accomplished and then for each task we need to do the scenario analysis that is uh, each task consists of multiple scenarios for example let us just take a simple case of a student in the office of a department the students can take leave one is that the students fill up a form give it to the office or get it uh, approved by the head of department give it in the office but then that is just one scenario the taking leave can have multiple scenario for example they want to take a medical leave or they want to take a semester withdrawal and so on so these are the different scenarios where they might have to do a slightly different procedure even though the task is applying for leave by a student that can have several scenarios and the fifth technique to gather requirements is the form analysis in the form analysis the forms that are used for giving information or the input and the forms that are used for producing the output these are analyzed to find out what are the data that are input and what are the data that are output. So, five well known requirements gathering techniques, studying existing documentation, interviewing the end users and the customer, task analysis, scenario analysis and form analysis. If you want to do requirements gathering for any project these are the five tasks five activities that typically we need to carry out now let us uh, take up a case study simple case study and try to understand how these activities are carried out of course many times the customer does not understand the problem well and uh, here it is the duty or responsibility of the person who is gathering the requirements 
to suggest to have lot of imagination and creativity and suggest to the customer what features might help and would be useful. Requirements gathering even though it appears like a simple task not really it requires lot of experience because this is a crucial task need to gather all the requirements from the customer who has uh, some of the requirements in mind and the others the person doing the gathering need to suggest to him and make him uh, appreciate that what features might be useful. The person doing the requirements gathering not only should have good communication skill, should have imagination, creativity and uh, experience. Now let us do a case study. Let us say the computer science department has an office which is uh, operating right now manually. There are two office clerks, a storekeeper and two attendants. Their main work is to uh, keep track of the academic records, the inventory of different equipments and so on and also the financial information of the department. And considering the low budget of the head of department, he just uh, entrusted this to a team of student volunteers to develop this uh, office automation work. Now let us see how the student members of the development team, they went about gathering analyzing and specifying the requirement. They selected the most experienced and persons, the student having good communication sk skill to carry out the requirement gathering. They met the head of department first and then try to identify what exactly is required. So, the head of department is the customer and then they met the office clerks, they are the end users because finally they will be using the software. What are the tasks that they do every day that they would like the system to automate? Even the other users they met like students who right now manually submit forms and so on, they would have to e submit it through the software to be developed, their expectations of the software, they interviewed the students and faculty who are also the stakeholders and so the users of the software. This task that was achieved by meeting the head of department the office clerk, the student and faculty identifying in what way they will use the software, what is their expectation of the software, what features will be required, this is the interview task. And then after identifying the tasks, they try to identify the steps through which these will be performed and then the various scenarios that may arise for each task. And this is the task and scenario analysis and then collected various types of forms that are used by the office both for the users that is student, faculty, etcetera to fill up and submit to the office and also the forms that the office uses to produce any output. And this is the forms analysis and then the student members who are carrying out the requirements task, they looked at the requirements gathered, identified inconsistency, ambiguity and incompleteness. These are the requirements problems, we will just look at what are these problems and how to overcome them. And they identified the problems and overcame them by discussing with the head of department. 
and then they went about documenting the requirement specification. Uh, we will stop here this lecture and we will continue from this point the next lecture. Thank you.